Hello and welcome. Uh, this will be the first video in my series with solutions videos for AutoCAD and its applications basics. <clears throat> so um, if you're not familiar, this book actually has two whole uh, books within it. You can actually buy the basics on its own, but if you buy the comprehensive version, it comes with both. And so this is the first half of the book. And every week I'll just be going and making a new video uh, covering the problems I decided to pick from the book. And so having said that, I'm going to jump right in. Okay. I thought I had a page. I did not. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to skim to the back for this week. We will be doing problems. Actually it is five. We'll be doing five, six, and eight. <clears throat> so I'm gonna move this out of the way and go ahead and start a new part. Uh, I'll hit new and you know, if you're part of my classes, you'll have the GNTC templates. Otherwise you can just choose uh, an Imperial template of some sort. And so the first thing it has us do here, <clears throat> it says start a new drawing from scratch or use a template of your choice. Draw the bar graph shown using direct distance entry and polar tracking. Each grid square represents one unit. Do not draw the grid lines. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to show how I would do it. A lot of fancy words there, but um, I feel like it's actually not too bad to actually get this going. And so you can just right click one of these two buttons to pop up the grid settings. And you want to make sure your grid has a spacing of one. And we want to also make it snap to one. And if you change one of these values, it changes the other. Um, also, <clears throat> if your template already does not have this, make your major line every one. And, um, you know, honestly, if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, you can also uncheck display grid beyond limits. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm going to draw this proportionally to where the book has it. And so, um, the easiest way to do this, instead of just trying to manually draw, you're still trying to get your feet wet, is if you just click this little button right here to turn on your grid snap. This one's your grid. This one's your grid snap. Um, when you have a line active, like I do now, uh, if I hover over these little grids, it kind of like jumps around, you can kind of tell. And so that's because it's snapping to these little grid squares. And so for instance, the first corner, you know, it's over here. And uh, if you're looking at the book, it goes up to, and you can actually pretty quickly draw. I'm going to also put it on polar or ortho because it's on polar right now. And Polar allows you to draw, you know, in a circular motion wherever, <clears throat> but if you put it on ortho, it only allows straight lines up, down, side to side. And so since this entire thing is up and down, side to side, we'll put it on ortho with the grid snap and it'll very quickly allow us to iterate. So uh, it's up to grid units. <clears throat> and as you see, I'm going to just continually click. So I'm going to move to the next spot, which is over to the right one grid unit. I'll go up two more units, over three, up three, <clears throat> over two, um, down two, over one, let's see, one, two, three, we're going to go up five, and if you notice, like, it actually get, gives you the dimension there, so like I can just move my mouse till I see a five pop up on the left there. So that's what I'll do. We're going to go over to down three, over one. We need to go back down four, over one. We're going to go up five, <clears throat> over three, down three. And as you can see, it's actually really not um, all that difficult. It's just, uh, you know, making sure you're getting your mouse in the right position before you click and then clicking. And so let's see, this one is down two as well over one from here. It's down three. And so I could move all the way over, you know, and click here at the green point to make it snap. Or there's this really cool command called close. If you've drawn this all continuously without, you know, messing up, you can hit close and it'll close it out. Either way works fine for what you're doing. <clears throat> but 
you know, as you can see, that's uh, that's the guy we have here. So I'll go ahead and jump to the next one. Now this one, uh, you know, it's kind of the same concepts without the grid. So uh, start a new gen drawing from scratch or use a template of your choice. Draw the hexagon shown using a dimensional input feature of dynamic input. Each side of the hexagon is two units. Begin at the start point and draw the lines in the direction indicated by the arrows. All this to say, um, you start here with your first, you know, you turn on your line. That's your first point. And then from here, you would make the length of this line two, and it's got the angle consistently of 30 degrees. And so, you know, at times you have to discern which part the angle should be based on. So like for here, if there was a theoretical horizontal line, a dimension between it and that theoretical horizontal line would be 30 degrees. <clears throat> and we can achieve this pretty easily. So I'll open up another new drawing. <coughs> Again, we'll use inches. And, uh, you know, there's not a, a grid shown. <clears throat> so we will just choose a random point to start. I'm going to do, um, let's do 14. I'll take that back. Let's do 14. Yeah, let's do 14.9. Okay. And so I'm going to make sure that my polar tracking is on. Right click polar tracking and uh, set the snap increments of the angle to 30, 60, 90, 120. What it allows, you know, like if I hold my mouse straight up, you can see it's got that green dotted line. That is telling me this is exactly 30 degrees. <clears throat> if I were to do. A line like this without that green little dotted line if I were to go and measure the angles between them and put the precision on maximum it's gonna be like 75.74321589 you know or something crazy like that so we have to work with snap angles on and that's what the whole premise of polar tracking is so um, you know we're gonna start in that bottom and we're gonna go in this direction and so we know from here, this is 180, so we need to be 30 degrees less. It's going to pop up and snap to 150. And then before doing anything, we need to specify the length. So I'm just going to type in 2, enter. And then the next one is straight up, so that's pretty cool. So I'll just do 2, enter. And I'm going to position over this way. Now, this one's a little tricky because you would probably think, like, I'll go 90 and I'll go down to 60, but it's actually from horizontal up 30 in this case and so we'll do two 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 and as you can see it's the same continuous concept you're just you know getting it in the right spot and then typing in your value and hit and go and so I could also you know do the close here or I could just you know snap it on and so since I did close last time I'll show you you know, if you have object snap enabled, it allows you to manipulate um, stuff in reference to other geometry. So like I could con connect to the, um, <clears throat> if I turn off my grid snap, <laughs> I'd connect to the middle of this line or the end of it or, um, you know, the middle, whatever really. And so these snap points allow us to accurately connect things. And so in this case, I'm just going to simply click the end point where we started. <clears throat> just like that got the next one done now this guy looks a little harder uh, but it's really not when you actually get into it essentially what I'm gonna do personally um, you know so consistently the way I draw will not be this way but since you're starting out it's easier just to follow along uh, with the path and so I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna like draw essentially all the way around I'll have to do a little bit of math at times and we'll, we'll flick this over and look at it when we need to but um, as you're starting out that's easier but eventually the concept would be, you know, more like you'll draw uh, a baseline, like, you know, this line here. You would do an offset to make this line up here. You would do an offset to make this one, offset to do this one, offset to do this one. And then you do the same thing, uh, starting with, you know, a baseline over here, probably uh, this one. And you would offset to this one. And uh, you would just trim and extend. It's actually a lot quicker that way. But that's really daunting and hard to visually process at first. So we're just going to start in this corner and we'll just work our way around with one continuous line <clears throat> all right and so it is also uh, you know inches so again there's no given start point so I always just try to make it so when I'm finished it's gonna be roughly in the middle you know 
Um, so how about we start around, let's do 12 by eight. Okay. And we need to, again, put it on uh, ortho mode since everything is just straight up and down lines or horizontal lines. And so uh, our first line is 0.75 up. So I'm just going to type that in and it's actually really small. I'm realizing now. So um, next we're going to go to the left half of an inch, move my mouse up. And so um, this is one of those cases where we got to do a little math. So we're trying to produce this line here. Our mouse is currently here. So I need to do the math, the difference, um, you know, 1.5 and 0.75. And so naturally um, that means our next line will be 0.75 up. Um, the next dimension is 0.75 to the right. <clears throat> and then let's see. So we have to do a little more math here. Um, you know, it gives us the overall height of 2.25, but what we're looking for is the distance from this point to this point. And so we've got 1.5 here and 2.25. So we need to subtract the two and that gives us another length of 0.75 for this line. So I'm going to move my mouse up. <clears throat> the next line is 1.75 long. And then we're prompted again with another uh, quick little math. So 1.75 minus 2.25 will give us the distance of this line. So that would give us a value of 0.5. And then we're getting a little crazier, <laughs> a little more math. Um, so we need to get the length of this line. And so we have 0 0.75, 1.75, 2.75. So these two combined is 2.5. 2.75 minus 2.5 gives us the value of this, which is 0 0.25. Um, again, a little more math, <laughs> but the next line 1.75 minus 0.5. That'll give us the difference, which is 1.25. Then we will move um, inwards. And again, we'll have to do a little math. That's going to be 2.25 minus 2.75. That'll give us, you know, from here to here. And so that is 2.25 minus 2.75, 0. 0.5. All right, so 0.5, and then we go down 0.5, and then you can either type in the value, I'll just do 1.75 to check our math, make sure it lands in the right spot, and it does. And so just like that, you have your shape. Now granted, you may be thinking like, you know, do I need these dimensions? Sure, you can have dimensions in these, that's great. But um, I know that it's not taught in the book until later. If you do wanna have them, just so that you can check and see if you're right, um, one, you're going to want to put them on a dimension layer, but you can simply hit the, um, I believe they call it smart dimension. It's just dimension. It is kind of a smart dimension though. You could hit that and uh, you could put on the dimension layer or make a dimension layer and you can simply just choose the lines and uh, it prompts you to do most of it. You can, you can also choose like endpoints, you know, something like this. And uh, that allows you to do some checking, but it's absolutely not required right now. Um, you'll know when it is. So as it stands, these are the, there's, there's plenty of other ones to do in the book if you want to flip through and work on some of these, but these are the three that I chose that you're going to be doing this week. And so if anybody has any questions about any of them, just let me know.